Hey, what's up gamers? Skelomistic. Have you ever been doing something or thinking about something, has something on your mind, what have you, and you're going along your daily life doing something that has nothing to do with an idea that you had earlier? You know, you're not even thinking about the thing. And something happens in that day or in that moment that just gives you an oh crap moment. You're like, oh, oh crap. And suddenly something comes to your mind that makes perfect sense about the thing that you were thinking about. It could have been days, weeks, or even years ago. Well, I was streaming last night. Well, okay, let, let me back the story up a little bit here to, to give you the full details. I was looking at some video clips that I made years ago of Wizard 101 content. <coughs> and... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Anyhow, I was looking at some clips that I made years ago of Wizard 101 content. Just They were just like little bits and clips I saved of important things that happened within Wizard 101, within the game itself. And at the time, I was looking at those clips, and I didn't really think a lot of it. And then last night, I was streaming, and I saw something within the game that gave me, literally, it gave me one of those oh crap moments. I almost gave up the ghost. I almost let the cat out of the bag last night on my stream. I almost did, because suddenly something I'd been thinking about for a long time made perfect sense. What is that? Okay, Scale, get to the point. I know you, all, you guys always say that. Okay, Scale, get to the point. I'm going to get to the point. What's going to happen in the fourth arc? What's going to happen to carry this Wizard 101 story along a little bit further? Now, everybody's been wondering about that. But as everybody knows, it's going to be <laughs> a little while before they progress that next step in the story. They're already doing the uh, Storm Drains content, you know, Test Realm and all that bit. So they got something on the plate right now, and they're not really worried about the next arc of the story. But you know they've laid the groundwork for it because, well, all right, let's look at this clip here. All right, so at the end of this whole Raven and Spider thing, we come back to the Arcane for our celebration, yada, 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 cake and cookies party for everybody, and we get interrupted by Sybil, the tree. Uh, now, so far as I know, these guys are like the, the, the knowledge keepers, the historians of this whole thing. And Sybil says to us, Greetings, wizard, or should I say, Scion. I could not help but overhear your joyous celebration. I do hope that you remain sufficiently afraid. <laughs> Lovely. Yes. Uh, actually, it was supposed to be celebrating now. I can't remember. I was supposed to be afraid, but anyway. We've no time for riddles, Tree. What are we supposed to be afraid of? You poor, excitable, insignificant beings. You have nothing. And see, there you go. Nothing. With the big tone. You know, notice the ominous tone, that little, like, little well, freaky sound, whatever it was. Disconcerting. And nothing highlighted in white. I fear your heroics in boarding Raven and Spider may have unintentionally ushered in something much, much worse. Okay, so we have nothing, quote unquote, to fear. I think I know where that's coming. It will take some time to. for us to process this information, wizard. Until then, do not stray right. far. <laughs> because it, because it won't be a couple of years till the next arc. So, okay, we've heard Sybil talk. She said we have nothing, quote unquote, to fear with the whole nothing outlined in white and all that bit. Sure, okay, fine. But that makes no sense. I mean, not by itself. Nothing to fear. Obviously, that nothing is something. Obviously. But what in the world could it possibly be? Well, that by itself doesn't make any sense, but when you piece some other things together, it starts making more and more sense. Okay, let's... Give you all a Wizard 101 quiz here. While I pick up these, uh, while I pick up these reagents, you know I can't pass reagents by. While I pick up the reagents, let's give you all a Wizard 101 quiz. Okay, here you go. Question one. Question one is, what is Wizard 101, or what is one of the things that Wizard 101 is really, really famous for? I'm gonna give you just a second to think about it. What one thing is it that they're really famous for within this game. And no, no, I don't mean cash grabs. No, I don't mean rip off packs. No, I don't mean that either. Come on. I know you guys are going to come up with those obvious answers, but no, that's not what I mean. 
All right, I. One more second. Okay. One of the things that Wizard 101 is famous for, I'd say as much or more than any other game, is they keep reusing, they get lots and lots of miles out of their villains. They really do. I mean, let's let's think about it. How many times have we seen this guy? That's right. Lots and lots and lots more. Okay, we saw Malastare a lot. Sure, in the beginning of the game, we saw Malastare here. We saw him there. We even saw him again after he died. I mean, good Lord. They burned that man out. Straight up burned him out. Now, in addition to that, those of you who like suspense movies or mystery novels or any of that type of stuff, what's one of the things that happens in those type of stories? Well, one of the things that happens, I, I won't even make you puzzle about one this one. One of the things that happens in those type of stories is that they introduce all the characters and each of the characters has some amount of play. You know, they're doing something or other. But invariably in those stories, someone who was introduced in the story just like everybody else and who had a little bit to do with the story, invariably that character is downplayed. Okay? In favor of... i got to turn those bats down. Sorry, hang on. Those bats are like super loud. There we go. Good Lord. Much better. All right. Anyhow, as I was saying, Invariably, one or more characters are downplayed. After they've taken their initial actions and they've been introduced and they're in your mind, they're downplayed in favor of some other direction but, or if you want to call it misdirection. Okay, it, it, the, the average mystery novel, the average film, somebody does something and then they're quietly tucked away because somebody else does something way worse and they get the focus and the spotlight and the attention just like Dobby in Harry Potter. It wasn't that bad, but Harry, Harry got all the play. Anyway, they take away the attention from that character. They downplay it in favor of some other character or some other event or some other thing to take your attention off of it. And then, just when you think you know who done it, at the end of the story, bam! This character pops right back up that they downplayed the whole time. And this character ends up being the one who was behind all the hijinks, who was behind all of the, the low-down sneaky play, maybe even the murder or the theft or whatever it was that was the bad guy stuff. This character is always behind that. Now, knowing that they have brought back Malastare and brought back Malastare and brought back Malastare, so we went through Malastare and we finally got to where they couldn't use him any anymore at all, <laughs> anymore. They went through Chrysalis and we went with Morganth, and then we went to Old Cobb, who turned out to be Spider, and Raven. Okay, we went through all that stuff. Great. What did we forget? Well, let's talk about what we forgot. I'm going to pop over there and show you what I think we forgot. All right, so hang on here for a minute. Watch this. No, impossible. I just need more go power through the to destroy you, villain. I draw down the song of creation and the shadow web. Okay, song of creation and shadow web. So she's not powerless, to say the least. Yes, it's vibrant power yada, courses yada, yada. through my veins like liquid fire. I will obliterate your living memory. And I mean, we've all seen this no, before. We know what happens, basically. Too much. So let's get to the it. The shadow burns cold. The song is too loud. I cannot hold it all. I cannot now. Okay, glass cracks. Okay, power shuts off, and she falls through the glass. Basically, falls through a hole into quote-unquote space. Dude, really? Shadow Web and the Song of Creation. This chick is like one of the most powerful thingy bobs around here. She falls through glass, quote unquote dies, and quote unquote is gone forever. For real? I highly doubt it. 
That's right, Morgan. Okay, let's put all this together now in one package. Yes, I do think that Morganth is coming back for the next arc. Why do I think that? Okay, this tree of knowledge, lore keeper, whatever kind of thing you want to call her, she says, okay, you, you've taken care of Raven and Spider, and you have nothing, don't don't do to fear. In the clip you just watched, Morganth, the owner of the Song of Creation, which created the spiral, for goodness sake, created the spiral, master, even more if it's possible, than Malice there, of shadow magic. Falls through a piece of glass into quote unquote space, by the way, the whole lack of gravity in space and you know the falling thing. Besides the fact, we're gonna just Cut right that put that part off creative license. She falls through into space. Okay. Alright, anyhow, Morgan, the master of all this magic, falls through a piece of glass into space and is after this fact, supposedly dead and gone forever. When Malastare, Malastare was like the evil energizer bunny. He kept coming and going and coming and going and coming and going forever. Morgan gets one lick and she's gone. I don't think so. Okay, so how this links up. We have nothing to fear. Well, Morgan fell to a, through a pane of glass, but what, she, what did she fall into? She fell into nothing. Space, I mean, the cosmos, whatever it is. She fell into nothing. Did she become nothing from, a, from the over, the, basically the overcharge of all those powers? Maybe. Maybe she became manager, I don't, but I don't, I don't think that's the case. I think that's a little bit too esoteric. Anyhow, you saw Morgan fall through the pane of glass, still kicking as she, as she quote unquote fell into space. She fell into nothing. Spider, at that stage in time, kind of schemed and planned and used all his, all his, his various, uh, whatever you want to call it, to make us fight Morgan. Why? Because he just came out of the hole and I think he wouldn't, he didn't have enough power to fight Morgan. Okay, I think that he did not have enough power and that's why we were fighting Morgan. He is kind of, I mean, sure, we were chasing after Morgan from the get go, but there's no way that Raven spent all this time trying to beat the snot out of Spider for looking to destroy the spiral and Raven didn't see Morgan doing essentially the same thing in a different way and have something to say about it. Why? Why would she not have something to say about it? Could she not have put a stop to Morgan? Did Morgan have that much power by that time? I don't know. Maybe Raven couldn't split her, her focus or her power between both Spider and Morgan. But that wouldn't make any sense because, well... Morganth was essentially, although again, not exactly the same way, following what Spider wanted to do and destroying the current spiral as it stands. Now, I don't know what those reasons are. That's up to the King's Isle writers to figure out. But I highly suspect that the nothing that's coming in the fourth arc is going to have to do with, a, with Morganth, a replay of Morganth, perhaps a different form of Morganth. But it all just makes too much sense. She falls into nothing. Nothing is what we have to fear. And Morganth was all this power and just suddenly like went by the wayside without, with barely a peep. You know, we defeated her in the palace and bam, she falls through the hole. And that's all you hear about her for, let's see, Polaris, Imperia, Mirage. Yeah, yeah, that's all you hear from her for like three or four worlds. I don't buy it. I'm sorry, senor, I don't buy it. No, no way, man. Um, what do you think? Because, well, that's where I would bet this fourth arc is going to go. Got any other ideas? I would love to hear them. Guys, that is it for my game theory for what's going to happen in the fourth arc. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, share, yell my name to the heavens, name your firstborn child, scale is good for a girl or a guy. I would really love to hear that happen. It would be great. 
And until next time, this is Skeleton Secret reminding you that whatever else you do, always love the game. Peace.